Hey guys, how are you all? Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about the method of calculating the base shear. All right, so as per IS 1893-2002, so I'll be using uh, this code IS 1893-2002 for calculating the base shear. So as per this code, uh, the base shear is defined as the total design lateral force at the base of a structure. All right, so for example, uh, if uh, so, let me show you. Alright, so this is our structure, right? So this is our building, for example. So uh, the lateral force, that is the force in this direction, or in this direction, or in this, not the vertical, actually the lateral, right? In the horizontal direction, or uh, from the opposite side. So uh, the force acting uh, lateral in these four directions is known as the base shear. So it's acting at the base of the building, alright? Okay, so uh, total. Okay, so we got this. All right. So as per IS eighty ninety three part one two thousand two clause seven point five point three, the total lateral force or the design seismic base shear is given by uh, this formula. That is, V B is equal to A H times the W. So here uh, W we know that it's seismic weight of the building, and I have made a previous video how to calculate uh, the seismic weight of a building. Uh, you can watch it and. And, uh, learn the method all right and AH is the design horizontal acceleration spectrum and uh, it can be calculated by using uh, this formula so AH that is the design horizontal seismic coefficient uh, is equal to Z I S A by 2 R Z where uh, Z is the zone factor all right so uh, it depends so the value of Z depends upon the uh, place where country or the zone where where your uh, building uh, is located right for example if a building is located in zone 5 so it's a very severe condition as per the tectonic uh, point of view so the value of Z is taken as 0 0.36 here I is the importance factor alright so uh, if your building is important in the sense that uh, there is a lot of uh, you know movement of the people then uh, the value of importance factor is 1.5 and if your building is like a normal building uh, like a residential building uh, where the uh, you know movement of people is very less so so your importance factor in that case is only one all right so response reduction factor r is the response reduction uh, factor all right so if your building is ordinary uh, movement resisting frame that is omrf then the value of r is taken as 3 and if your building is smrf that is special movement resisting frame then the value of r is taken as 5 all right so sa by g is collectively known as average response acceleration coefficient so before calculating uh, if the value of is by G first you have to find the time period of the building alright so the time period of the building is given by clause 7.6.2 and uh, it's given by this formula so this formula holds valid if your building has uh, infill panels that is infill walls and if it doesn't you have to use the clause 7.6.1 alright so uh, as per 7.6.2 uh, time period of your building is given by 0 0.09 times h divided by square root of D where H is the height of the building in a meter and D is the base dimension alright so for example if this is your building uh, then H is the height of the building from uh, this point to uh, this point right so this is total height of the building and uh, D is the base dimension so base dimension means that uh, your uh, value from so uh, your dimension from this to so that this is the base dimension in x direction so same goes in the y direction right so base dimension in so this is the base dimension in the y direction not very accurate but appropriate all right all right so so this is how you calculate the time period and once you get the time period you can get the value of sa by g using these formulas right Okay, so SA by so for uh, for example, if your uh, building is located on a rocky or hard site or swell swell condition, and your time period is between zero seconds to zero point one zero seconds, then your SA by G comes from one plus fifteen times of T. All right, so if your uh, building is located on rocky or hard soil, and uh, your time period comes from zero point one zero comes between uh, zero point one zero to zero point four zero, then uh, the value 
value of SAYZ is 2.50. All right. So same goes for uh, you know other conditions, right? All right. So this is how you calculate the AH, and once you get the AH, you already have the W, and you can calculate the base shear. All right. Okay. So after calculating the base shear, uh, I'll tell you later how you can calculate the story shear. That is how you can distribute the entire base shear in each story. Okay. So here I have taken an example of for calculation of the uh, base shear. All right. So first uh, we calculate the time period. That is we go in the reverse uh, order. All right, so time period, as I have already told you, uh, this formula, right? So H height of the building in my case is 26.519 meter, and D in the x direction, that is along uh, this direction. So D along this direction, I have taken here as 25.044 meter. So putting this value, I get T A X, that is time period in the x direction, as 0.48 second, and along y direction, that is D along uh, this direction this direction uh, that is why uh, D I got 2.269 meter and putting this value I got time period as 0.53 second alright so okay so uh, I have taken here uh, my site condition as medium soil alright so as you can see uh, for TAX that is 0.43 second okay so here we go right so for medium soil so our time period is 0 0.43 it means that it lies between 0 0.102 to 0 0.55 right so SA by G the value turns out to be 2.50 as uh, I have shown here 2.50 the same uh, way you can you can calculate uh, in the y direction right so zone factor as my building is located in a uh, very severe condition zone that is zone 5 so I have taken zone factor as 0 0.36 alright importance factor uh, my building is an educational building so that is why uh, there is a lot of uh, movement of people so uh, importance factor I is 1.5 and response reduction factor as my building is uh, SMRF that is special movement resisting frame so I have taken R as 5.0 okay putting these value I get the value of AH at 0 0.135 similarly uh, in the in the X direction right similarly in the Y direction I get uh, the value of AH as 0 0.135 right okay so after getting the value of AH I calculate the base shear Okay, so VV, I know uh, the formula is the uh, VV is equal to H times DW. So DW is seismic, seismic weight of the building I have calculated and found out to be uh, this value. And in the X direction, uh, I put HX, that is uh, base shear in the X direction. Uh, I, I get this value. And similarly, in the Y direction, putting the respective values, I get the uh, result as this value, right? Okay, so once you calculate uh, the base shear in X and Y direction, so my uh, value in X and Y direction is same in this case, but uh, this might not always hold true. You know, you, you might have a base shear, uh, a different value in X and Y direction, okay? All right. Okay, so design of story shear calculation. So after calculating the base shear, so we distribute this uh, entire lateral force acting at the base of the building in each story. So, so story shear that is QI can be obtained by WIHR squared by summation of W I H I squared times the base shear where W I is the seismic we uh, weight of floor at uh, floor I I floor and H I is the height of that floor and this is the summation and times the base shear okay so uh, this might be confusing right now but uh, let me clear you in this table alright so I got uh, these many floors same basement ground first second third fourth and the roof floor all right so seismic weight of each floor are given in this column right so height of these floors from the base of the building as uh, 3.048 6.401 meter right so these uh, are the heights of the respective floors so what I do in the next column is that I squared uh, all these values here after that what I do is that I multiply this column with this column to get the value of this column that is W I H I squared okay all right, so I get all, all these values, right? And finally, I sum up. So this gives me summation W I H I squared, right? Okay, so I multiply this value with this value, right? So uh, this value, sorry, with this value, and I get this, and I sum this up to get this value, right? Now what I do is that I divide this value by this value, right? To get this one again I divide this value by this value to get 
this value right similarly I divide this value with this value to get this value and same goes on for every case alright so after that uh, what I do I find the QI that is I multiply this base here into with this value so this column multiplied with this column gives me uh, the storage here same goes for these for these many floors and finally I get storage share of each and every uh, floor alright so this is how you calculate the base shear and using that base shear you can calculate the storage shear okay so this uh, storage shear value will be used a uh, while you know uh, putting the loads uh, earthquake loads in SAP 2000 so uh, this is helpful there alright okay so this is how you do it and hope uh, it was helpful